are a local Christian community with a global reach. We are an ethnically diverse, intergenerational family of passionate believers who bring hope and unconditional love to Catherine and far-reaching communities with a life-changing, Bible-based message. We see generations walking and learning together, praying with and encouraging one another to fulfill God's purpose for their life. We connect, grow, and serve together to see the character, development, and behavior of those around us influenced in a life-changing way with our message of hope in Christ. Hello and welcome, family. Here we have another opportunity today to gather together, to worship the Lord, to sit in the Word, and really, as a fellowship, just to enjoy God's presence together corporately. As we progress today, you're going to see a number of different things happen. So in a few minutes, my beautiful wife is going to lead us in some worship. We're going to see a video play that um, a lot of you have contributed to, and I hope you're encouraged by it. Then we're going to worship the Lord some more. As we worship, where you sit in your lounge room at home, Lift your hands, praise the Lord, sing your lungs out. There's no one there to care what you sound like, just you and your family. So sing your lungs out, worship the Lord, engage with him, because where you are today, that is your place of encounter, your place of change, and your potential place of breakthrough and liberty. Praise God. So we're going to have an offering message in a few minutes, which I will bring. Uh, Tammy is going to do some announcements for us. And then Mitchell is going to bring a word, and I believe the, the word is, is Jesus is our peace and the author of our faith. So grab your Bible, your notebook, your pen, or your digital device, and get ready to take notes, get ready to delve into the word, encounter God today, and be determined that today is going to be your day of breakthrough. We love you. If we can help you, please get in touch with me, because we'd love to help you if you, if you need assistance of any kind your family, and the fact that we're not all in the same room doesn't change that. Family, love family, and family, walk with family. God bless you. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious to you. And Lord, turn him face toward you and give you peace. Let's sing that one again. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. And Lord turn his 
nations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within Dave Howarth. You probably remember me as the, uh, the bloke with the second best hairdo in the Heritage family. Here are my pearls of wisdom. Focus your eyes on Jesus. His mercy is new every day. His favour is upon you. Be strong and courageous. 
Our God is with us. You are a priceless treasure. The Holy Spirit doesn't social distance. You get your worries to Jesus. Be grateful for something today. Hey, do dogs go to heaven? I'm not sure. I hope so. Press on, don't give up. Christ has set us free. The word of the Lord never fails. God is in control. And Heritage Family is one safe refuge, just like Christ and the Holy Spirit and our Father is a safe refuge. Every heart set apart just to be with you. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know where is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name Jesus, 
Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Where can we strongholds shine through the shadows? Burn like the fire. Your name, Jesus, your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break through, break through. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. The light can fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus right now, I would just want to break the power of depression over those people who are listening in your homes right now. I break its power over you in the name of Jesus. Put on this garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus. You are loosed from that. In Jesus' name. That anxiety, that worry, in the name of Jesus, put on the garment of praise for yes. the spirit of heaviness. Sing Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy of all praise and glory and honor, Lord. We worship you. Sing hallelujah. Good. 
worship Him. We worship You. We just thank you for your presence, Father. We just thank you. Wow, what a beautiful atmosphere that we're in. I just thank you, Lord, as we've been praising and worshipping you. So, Lord, we just, right now, all of us in our homes, we're just going to gather in prayer. Because as we know, saints, prayer works. And our Heavenly Father is listening. And he is ever present and he is more than able so we just thank you father we thank you for those situations we thank you for the heartache that people might be going through in one in particular we've got a family member down south that is just doing it a little bit tough so right now father we just thank you that you're ever present and that you're their peace during this time and we just thank you, Father, that you are more than able to give them all that they need, all that they require. We thank you for supernatural strength during this time, Lord. And we thank you for your peace. Your peace in their home, your peace in that situation. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we also, we want to hand over India to you, Father God. We just thank you that where you are opening doors in one way, Lord, we just know that there are so many struggles and there are so many things that are completely out of uh, man's ways, Father God. The need is just so great. But Father, we just know that you are a supernatural God that is able and we just thank you, Lord, that you can do all things. So where there are people that are hungry, Lord, you will multiply what they have, Father God, in a supernatural way. Where they are unable to receive medical attention, Lord God, you will be their healer. Father God, where they are bound in their houses, Lord, that they will become uh, places of worship, Father God, that will be honouring to you. And supernatural things will happen within their communities, within their villages. And we just bless each and every one of the pastors and the Christians over in those nations, Lord. We know that's not just India. There's many other nations that are also doing it tough. They're not as blessed as we are 
here in Australia, Father God. So we just pray, Lord, that you will be their provider, that you will be their provision. And Lord God, that you will make a way where there was no way. And Lord, your name will be greatly exalted and, and, and highly praised in all those situations, Father God. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. And we give you all, 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 all in Jesus' mighty name. We just thank you for those that are lonely, Father God, all those that are, that are sitting at home on their own. Father, we just thank you that you're their comforter during this time as well and that you will just be their, their friend and you will just give them such, such a peace in where they're at, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We just thank you, Lord. We just give you all praise. We give you all glory in church. We know that prayer works. We know that he hears. We know that he answers prayer. So why not Tuesday night at 7 p.m. log in to Zoom and join us in prayer. Join us as a prayer in community where there's two or more gathered in his name. He is in the midst and he does answer prayer. So Pastor Andrew will be sending out the details on the Tuesday and you can log in to Zoom and you can join us in prayer. That would be fantastic, church. And right now I'm going to hand over to Pastor Andrew because he's going to lead us in our offering. Bless you, church. Well, good morning, family. It's that time in our service where we gather together and we give unto the Lord. I want to encourage you with something today. Uh, and the essential word that I want to give you is don't draw back, don't withhold, don't stop giving simply because we find ourselves in a circumstance that is less than favourable. I know people have lost incomes, people have lost jobs, other people uh, are facing different, different difficulties that have a financial uh, consequence for them. There's all sorts of things going on in people's lives during this time. But I want to challenge you, as we consider our giving today, as we look at who the Lord is and as we consider what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us about our giving, I'd remind you in Genesis chapter 26, in a time of famine, now, when you, when you uh, begin to read in Genesis 26, the writer actually says that it wasn't just the first famine. There was another famine. So it was famine upon famine. And starting from round about verse 12, talking about Isaac, it says in there that Isaac planted in a time of famine and in the same year he reaped a harvest. God prospered him. I want to challenge you. Trust God with your giving. Now seek Him. Listen to His voice. Give according to His instruction to you. Give according to His prompting to you. We know that um, Paul told us in Corinthians to determine in our heart and give with a cheerful heart. Proverbs says that there is one who scatters abroad and yet increases beyond logic. And there's another one who withholds everything to themselves and yet doesn't prosper. They go broke. God's economy is an economy of giving and blessing, of looking beyond and reaching beyond ourselves. In a moment, you'll see some bank account details on the bottom of the screen. As you see those details, consider, Lord, what do you want me to give today? What would you have me give? And give with faith. Give knowing that when you give to God, God is no man's debtor. In other words, God won't hang you out to dry in your giving. So as you give today, do it cheerfully, do it purposefully, and do it with a glad and happy heart. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray in a moment. Again, I would say to you, and you're going to hear this three or four times through the service, but if you or someone you know uh, needs help, please contact myself or Jenny or Pastor Tammy or Mitchell, but contact us and let us know so that we can see how we might be able to bless you. So that's the other thing your giving does. It empowers us as a church to reach out into the community as well. So, hallelujah, let's pray. 
Father, I thank you today that as people give, Lord, as people seek your voice, as people seek your direction, your leading in their giving, the Father, they are giving to you who is all faithful. They are giving to you the one who is more than enough. The one who brought Isaac a, a, a marvelous harvest in the middle of a famine when no one else was planting because no one else could get a harvest. Isaac planted and trusted you and you brought him a harvest during that famine. I thank you, Lord, as we look outside ourselves and as we reach beyond our own capacity and rest in you, that, Father, you supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we are not dictated to by circumstances. Rather, we are led by your Spirit and we obey in faith. I give you praise and glory for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, church. Bank details are there. Um, and if you want to give to India, just deposit funds and put India on your transfer and we'll make sure every cent goes to them. Love you. God bless you. Mitch is going to bring the word real soon. Well, good day, church. Just before we begin, I'd like to pray and let's believe God to really impact us as I share the word today. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, today, even though we're not together in a congregation of people, we're still together as a church. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you begin to impact people's lives. As we share the word, as we look at scripture today, Holy Spirit, go before me and let every word begin to impact the hearts of people. That, Lord, that you would move powerfully in people's lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what an, an incredible time we're in. You know, we've, there's so many people in our nation at the moment, and even in our own town, that are experiencing a loss of hope, experiencing a loss of security. You know, there's people that have lost their jobs, they've lost their, their, uh, their future, they, they've still got their car loan, they've still got their house loan, they've still got to pay their power bill, they've still got to do so many things, and we don't know how long this situation is going to go on for. Is it going to be a month? Is it going to be two months? I've even heard it's going to be 18 months before we get going. And here in the Territory, a lot of businesses have lost the, uh, the tourist season, which we rely on. You know, so we're not going to see anything until next tourist season. It is a difficult time. It is a time where people in Australia are facing, some, of, some people are facing difficulty in this way where their security base has been gone. The security base, so they always had security in their job or their industry. It's gone. We can't do a thing about it. Some people can't go and open their businesses. Some people's business where they worked is no longer open. They can't go and, 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 and experience uh, what they used to experience. You can't go and sit down and have a cuppa in the shops anymore. It's a difficult time. And this time is where we, as Christians, can experience something that a lot of people don't experience. In the midst of all the difficulty, in the midst of all the worry, in the midst of all the concern, we still have peace. Today I want to talk about that peace. Today I want to share and look into the scripture and see what the Bible says about peace. And if you're watching for the first time, today is a fantastic day for you to learn that Jesus has something for you. He has got a peace. And the, and the Word of God says that, that He will give you a peace beyond understanding. Well, you can't understand how to fix these problems. But there's a peace that God can bring and fill the void in our hearts. He can bring hope where there's hopelessness. He can bring breakthrough in our lives where we can rest knowing that he's got it. Jesus has paid a price that we can sit and relax in peace. So Christians, we've got to be reminded sometimes. You know, we watch the, what's on Facebook, we watch what's on the news, and we listen to people talking. You know, I've had people tell me it's never going to be the same again. I've had people say it could be four years before we get back to what we were. I've had people tell me that it's 18 months uh, before we're even allowed to travel outside the Territory. You know, there is so much fear. I went into one of my businesses, and as you know, me and Andrew were in India when all this stuff blew up. 
So we came home from India and we did what we were supposed to do. We stayed in quarantine and we, we sat in a house for 14 days. I sat in my house on the farm and didn't even go out to, uh, to the block at all. I stayed in the house for 14 days. Andrew stayed in a house in town here for 14 days to make sure that we didn't have any symptoms of the virus. We were in a place where we knew, you know what? We were in a place, we're on aeroplanes, but now we've proven it after 14 days. So about 16 days after we got back, I walked into one of my businesses. And one of my great workers there, he's over 50, and I walked up and said, G'day, how you going? Haven't seen you for weeks. He says, get away from me. I, I, I thought he was joking. He says, get away from me. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm really nervous and I'm, I'm shaking and, I'm, and, I, and I, it's like I'm starting to have a panic attack because you're here. I said, why? Well, you've been overseas. You're the ones with the virus. I said, mate, I'm probably one of the safer ones because I've actually done the quarantining with no, no evidence of any virus. He goes, I don't care. What was happening in this man was fear. There was fear in his heart that the rational understanding of what's going on was overlaid with fear. So I said, no problem, I will leave. I will go away so that you feel more comfortable. Without hope, fear can reign. Without, without Christ in your life, there's no gauge. There's no way that that fear can be suppressed. Like this man, he had to. I, I, I told him the facts. He says, I don't care. I don't, be I don't believe it. I, I, I'm over 50, he said. I said, well, so am I. But that fear had his heart. You know, church, there are so many people that that fear has got their heart. It's, it's embraced them and there's nothing to take it away. But we as Christians, we have something. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33, it says, For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. So there's a lot of confusion going on in society today. But the Jesus that we serve is not a God of confusion. He's a God of peace. And if we're going to look at everything and feed ourselves with everything that, we, that the news is saying and what people are saying, you're going to die if you're over 50 and it's, we're never going to be the same again. If you're going to look at all those things, you're going to build up that fear. See, what you feed is what you get. And if we can pull back as a church, pull back as a people of God and begin to read the Scriptures and build ourselves up, we will feel the peace of God begin to rise afresh. So God is not a God of confusion, but he's a God of peace. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with, our, with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a supernatural peace through Jesus. You know, when we heard messages before we were saved, they said there's an emptiness, there's a void in your life that needs to be filled. Today in Australia, that emptiness and void is realer than ever. There's... That, that people need something to bring that peace. There's a lot of people staying awake at night. There's a lot of people worrying about their finances. There's a lot of people can, being concerned. But we have the Prince of Peace. We have the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Philippians 4, 6 and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanks, thanksgiving, let our requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God that surpasses our natural understanding. So it's deeper than our natural understanding. It's deeper than what we can fathom with our minds. And I know as I've, as I've walked the Christian life and I've faced many trials through, through businesses that I've been running and through when we were doing church life and everything, that things can be absolutely overwhelming in the natural, but underlying that is a peace. There's this voice that says, you know, it's going to be all right. I could be raging out here, but deep down, if I just stop, you know what, it's going to be fine. Christ in me is my hope of glory. It's, it's going to be all right, Mitchell, because he's got the plan for your life. He's got the destiny set out. And someone said to me, oh, how do we make this work? 
in the corona season and they were meaning our ministries. Well, it's no different. Jesus is the same today as he was before corona. The same things work today. The Word of God works exactly the same. It's the same Word. In fact, it becomes more real because now we have to grab hold and get the peace of God to function in our lives. I love that piece of Scripture in Philippians. And the Amplified Bible says in the, later, the, the second half of it, it says, "...which transcends all understanding..." shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. It's not just, oh, you know, I've got a little bit of peace. This piece of scripture is talking about that there's actually a fortress built around you. And he's got guards there to protect your heart, to protect you in Christ Jesus. So one of the key things is we've got to be in Christ. We've got to be focused into Christ. We've got to have accepted Christ into our lives And that garrison and that that mounted guard around and over our hearts will protect us. If you've been letting your mind go crazy, you can say, I don't think that's true. But if you pull yourself back and say, you know what, Holy Spirit? At this time, I need your peace. And even now I can sense the Holy Spirit just bringing that calmness, that peace Inside, in the deepest part of my being, that's what it says. I love what the Message Bible says on this same piece of Scripture. It said, do not fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let positions and praise shape your worries into prayers. That sounds fantastic. Let God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's a wonderful that what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. What a fantastic way to put that piece of scripture. Let your worries, grab hold of your worries and say, here you go, worries. Instead of freaking out, instead of being stressed out, I'm going to grab hold of that. I'm going to do something with it. And I'm going to change those worries into prayers. How do you do that? How do you change your worry into prayer? And some people think, oh, I've got to make it sound good. The very thing going through your mind, oh, no, Lord, how am I going to pay? This can be the prayer. Oh, Lord, how am I going to pay for my rent? How am I going to pay for my loan? How am I going to bring these things to you, Lord? Instead of me sitting here winding and churning over and freaking out because every way I look at it, I can't see the answer, this piece of Scripture said, turn those things and say, Lord, here they are. Here's my worry. I'm going to present it to you. And I love what this piece of Scripture says, how it's going to, that the sense of God and the peace of God as you lay the stuff onto him, that sense of God is going to bring about the peace of God. You're going to feel the calmness settle upon you. Because you know what he says, son, daughter, I'll take those. I'll take those. You know what? I already had a plan. We talk as when we're preaching, and I've heard Andrew say this and I say it, he says, nothing takes God by surprise. He wasn't kicking back on the throne, talking to Jesus, how you going, want another cuppa? And then suddenly realised, Corona's here! Oh no, what are we going to do? We've watched our governments run around, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? In the King of Kings throne room, that never ever happens. He knew that this was going to be here. He knew that it was going to affect your life. And he has got a plan for him. That's why we can rely on him. Psalms 29, 11 says, The Lord gives us strength, strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. There are so many script, scriptures about this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's Romans 5, 1. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from their wicked ways and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. I love that little bit on the end there. That that we've got a job to do. You know, we can come here and say, I don't feel the peace and I'm the Christian, I don't feel the peace. This piece of scripture gives a little gem in there. 
and says, you know what? We've got to seek peace. The promise is there. The time and time again, if you just go into your, your Bible program and just write peace in and see how many scriptures, there are so many scriptures that come up that God has peace for you. Andrew today, when he was doing the message for offering, was talking about famines and, and we experience famines. And, you know, we experience in the church the same as the rest of the world at this time. But one thing we do have that the world doesn't have is Jesus, is the peace. If you pursue peace, if you actively pursue God and sit down, you know, I love to put, uh, I call it waiting on God music. It's just instrumental music. It could be piano or some worship songs. It's just instrumental. I just like to sit down and shut my eyes and sit there with God and let that music just wash over me and say, here I am, Lord. Father, this is a time I present myself for you to minister to me. And just sit and listen to the music and allow the peace of God and invite the peace of God and say, Lord, let your peace come and wash over me. Now, I have some very difficult days sometimes. And it gets that difficult, I think, you know what, I'm starting to freak out a bit. And I'll go and do that, and you can actively sense the Spirit of God begin to wash over you. And I'll really challenge you this week. Let's be a people that live in the peace of God. There's some criteria to, being, to getting that benefit. You have to be born again. You have to have allowed Jesus to come into your life and every one of the things I'm talking about here will be available for you. In Romans 3.23, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, that means that every one of us, and you can say, Ah, oh, but I didn't do that nasty sin. It's not talking about identifying a sin. What it's basically saying, For everyone has chosen to live their own life and not live it how God wanted them to. But I didn't even know God. It doesn't change. You didn't live like him like he wanted you. So the word of God says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 says, As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. You cannot get into heaven by being a good person or being a, and living a righteous life because you've already sinned. And one sin is enough. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as though one man sinned, entered the world and death through sin, and through death separated all men because of sin. All have sinned. So Adam, if you know the story of Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve sinned because in them was everybody else in creation. Everybody else was tainted with that curse of sin. Every single person. All have sinned through one man. Through that one man, Jesus, we have eternal life so Romans 6 23 says for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord so the wages of sin what's the wages like you go to work you work and there's your reward is your wages the reward for sin according to the word of God is death and that's not the death that you you know got really old and your batteries ran out and you fell over that sort of death this is talking about a spiritual death. The wages of sin brings a spiritual death to you. So how do we resolve this? Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Now, why did Jesus die? While you were still a sinner, before you, you even knew him, he had died on the cross. And we've just come, like last week was Easter. That's the story of Jesus' sacrifice. Dying on the cross for you. Dying on the cross for me. Not just for the people that were there. Every single person has the opportunity to come to him. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart one believes unto righteousness and with your mouth confesses confession is made unto salvation 
This is a fantastic piece of scripture. That means that you can acknowledge, that as I went through those scriptures, you can acknowledge, hey, yes, all have sinned. You can acknowledge that Jesus Christ has died on the cross. And if we confess that, and how hard is that to do? Now, I really challenge you if you've never done this. Like in Australia, we've had such security for such a long time. This, I think, is one of the first times that we've had to really sit down and look that we need help, we need support. This piece of scripture is saying, if you just confess, you know what, Lord, I need you. You've got nothing to lose. You're watching this on Facebook or on YouTube. You've got nothing to lose. You're not in a big crowd. You're not around a lot of people. You can pray this prayer and see what God does. If you confess and say, you know what, Lord, I need you. In my heart, I believe something's stirring. In my heart, I believe that there's something in this. I believe that you're real. And in my mouth, I say, I need you. I need salvation. You know what? The Holy Spirit, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. You will experience the Spirit of God come upon you. You will experience God's peace that I've been talking about here. I'm talking about to, to the church, the Christian church, that same peace that if you just stop and you rest and you say, Jesus, I need to know your peace, he will come and fill your life. You will experience that emptiness and that void in your life being filled up by the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Some people I've spoken to when they've experienced salvation and said, just like I walked outside and everything was new, like all the, like yesterday I must have been seeing in black and white. Today I'm seeing everything new. Some people have said, I've tried to read the Bible before and I never, never, it was so confusing, but I sit down now and I read it and it all makes sense to me because something's happened in your life. We call it born again. The Spirit of the living God comes and dwells within you and fills your life with life. He fills your life with peace. And suddenly every benefit that the Bible has can be yours. This is one of the most exciting parts of the Christian life, the day you accept Jesus. And I want to pray. I want to pray for two lots of people. I want to pray for the Christians that might have forgotten that, hey, you've got to pull back and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. And the second one is I want to pray for those that want to receive Jesus for the first time. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for the promises. We thank you so much for the benefits that come with being a part of your kingdom. And today, Lord Jesus, as people are sitting down watching this message, that, Lord, if there's anxiety, if there's depression, if there's, if there's uh, things in their lives they just can't get on top of if there's, if there's frustrations in their lives. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command those things to stop. And I command the peace of God. Father, that we would be captured by your, by your presence. That we, our attention would be grasped by your word, Lord Jesus Christ. And that peace of God can begin to flow and flow through our lives and throw, flow through our marriages and flow through our families and flow through our finances. And Lord, that we will know, even though we've got to sometimes face difficult things, that Lord Jesus, we know that you'll have a way for us through. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you for that. That Lord, that you would minister to everyone today in Jesus' name. And if you really want to accept Christ into your life today, if you want to allow that peace of God to become a part of your life, and we're not just talking about your life until you die, this is talking about eternal life. You will be welcomed into the throne room of God for eternity. They say it's life. They say the other place which we call hell and Hades is death, but you will have eternal life in the presence of God. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is satisfaction, there is peace. You will have that for eternity by praying this prayer with me today. It's very simple. Just follow along and you can put your own words on this. But let's believe God to come into your life today and make a difference that you've got someone to do life with that's got your back, that's got, got you in a place where you can go, you know what, I don't know what's going on, but my covenant partner does and he's made a plan. Just pray this way. 
Lord Jesus, I don't know you yet. But Lord, I need your peace in my life. Forgive me. I've been living my life my own way and and putting my trust in so many things, Lord. But today I want to put my trust in you. Will you please come and save me, Jesus? Fill my life with the things that Mitchell's been talking about here today. And I can walk with you for eternity. Let me pray for you. Lord Jesus, for those that have just saying that prayer for the first time, or even those that are saying it again if they've struggled. Holy Spirit, come right now and touch them. Fill their hearts to overflowing. Fill them to a place where they will experience your peace like never before, that they would be amazed at your presence. They would be amazed at the transformation. Even those that have thought, oh, this whole religion stuff's just garbage, but somehow today you've touched their heart. That, Lord, that you would demonstrate yourself powerful in their lives. That you would build testimony in their lives that I was struggling and then Jesus came into my life and, I, and my life was transformed. That, Lord, that they would sleep so comfortably. That, Lord, the things they've been struggling with in their lives, Father, would become small in their focus as you fill their lives with your glory. Anoint them for success and anoint them, Father, to experience the fullness of who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've, take, if you've said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to know. Can you just privately, uh, privately message Andrew or myself and just say, you know what? I accepted Jesus. Because the Word of God says that you've just become our brother or our sister. And we really want to celebrate with you. We'd really love to give you some information and show you how to get on the journey of salvation. See, today, if you accepted him, it's just unlocked the door into glory. But we want to help you to experience the fullness of who Christ is and understand the Word of God and teach you how to pray and teach you how to experience the love of Christ in your life. So just go on to, if you're on Facebook, just send a private message. We don't want to know all your details. We just go, hey, yeah, I accepted Jesus today. And if you want us to help you, just let us know who you are and we will forward you some information and, and show you how to read your word and stuff like that. It's one probably the most exciting day of your life. It'll change your future forever. So thanks for tuning in today. And... Uh, we love you here and, you know, we are in a difficult time, but we have an awesome God with great security that we will make it through in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week. Bless you, Zay. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let's declare it out today. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of love. I am surrounded by the arms of the Father. Songs of deliverance, we've been liberated yes. from our bondage. 
with the sons and the daughters. Let us sing songs of freedom. <laughs> Hang on, let me think about it. No. <laughs> Hello, family. Someone come and get him, will you? <laughs> Is my strength the joy of the Lord? He gives me living water and I thirst no more. <laughs> some point we'll do a bloopers. <laughs>